Yeah, we'll see if you're ready or not now that Craig's here. So are you ready? I am not ready. I have to go home for a little bit. <laughs> and I'm hungry. And uh, I just, I look, I need to make a con save or two on the toilet. Too bad. You're here. Use your pants if you have to. We're recording <laughs> this thing. <laughs> All right. What are we recording? Uh, we are recording the Grumpy Dungeon Masters podcast. I'm the Grumpy Dungeon Master Jay. My co-host, the Grumpy Dungeon Master Christopher. Hi. And uh, we talk about Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games. Uh, nowadays, it, I think it's going to be more role-playing games than just D&D. Yeah, D&D's kind of uh, d and done. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. It kind of, I mean, we all know it's kind of taken a, a dump lately. Uh, you know, the products have been bad for a couple of years. The OGL nonsense that we are done talking about. <laughs> well, we'll be talking about it here soon. God damn Not it. today. Not okay. today. Okay. But here soon. I, I we have, we're going to have a good friend back on probably oh, next, okay. next week. And he wants to talk about it a little bit because he didn't get a chance to talk about it with anybody. So he has to air out his grievances. and. Okay. Well, me, me and you alone, we're not yeah, talking about it. We might, we might have guests on that we'll discuss it with and stuff. But. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm done with it. I, you know, it's just, just a thing. I'm actually kind of worried that, um, that future products for fifth edition are going to be handled quite poorly, and I'm very worried about sixth edition. Or okay, hold, hold, hold on. All right, so. Mean, let, D and done, yeah. Let, let's take this in two steps. First off, you're worried about 5th edition products being bad? Yeah, better. I bad, don't... Better? They, I don't... Can they get worse? Like, well... Spelljammer and Dragonlance were both terrible. I, I feel as if the, the next anthology that comes out is going to be the last new piece of actual written material to come out of fifth edition. Um, the only other adventure book that comes out is the rewrite of uh, Lost Minds of Fandelver. And while there may be parts of that that are new, none of it is going to be actually new content. You're just going to be running Fandelver again. Yeah. They're taking their oldest product and putting a uh, a nice coat of paint on top of yeah, it. Yeah, they, they released the uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen couple of weeks ago that nobody cared about they're releasing Fendelver again which nobody cares about uh, i've been seeing them posting a lot in the dungeons and dragons like facebook group uh watsy has been posting about the what is it the the new anthology one that's coming out uh keys to the golden vault yeah and it's literally just everyone laughing like that's the responses it's like nobody cares and it, it's a shame because you know um there are a lot of good writers that wrote. Oh, those, I'm sure, yeah. I mean, it sucks. It sucks for them. It yeah, it, it does. Uh, I I know a couple of the writers that they, you know, through back channels, I've learned a couple of the, the writers and good people that are writing good stuff. So if you're looking for good content, especially like a thievery style, heist style content, that book is going to be fantastic. Yeah. There's nothing new in it. Um, just, but there's a lot of good one shots, and I will actually be running it in Adventures League. That's going to be probably after Spelljammer. Um, I oh, also real quick, I got to learn not to say um on this podcast. I listened to ours last week, and I said um like five hundred thousand yeah. times. So I Look, apologize I, in advance. I spent and I spent like twenty minutes of a single podcast last year, year before. It's been a long time ago where I specifically talked about people saying um. Or it, yeah. Or me, me. I just did it right there. The it, 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 like it's a thing of your brain just trying to sort of catch up to yeah. what you want to say, and we all kind of do it. But noticing it makes you try not to do it. Right. So, anyways, the content's going to be very good, and it's the last piece of real content. So, I think everyone should pick it up if they like D and D content. Mm -hmm. There's no more cool new books uh the big b's book is possibly going to be pretty good and oh, Plane, planescapes this year isn't it planescapes yeah but look look how they handled spell oh, no, oh yeah no i yeah. i i have no hope for planescape none 
so the only other book is the deck of many things book which would be the only like magic item book that they would release for fifth edition which i'm assuming it's a magic item book i would think so. by this time in the cycle we should have like four or five of those yeah we're a decade in at this point nearly right so yep. i'm also yep. worried about like because because the 5e content is kind of coming to a close and coming to an end and it's it's done they've 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 published all the stuff that they're going to publish they're never going to go back to dark sun they're never going to go to a place that's crazy or has any kind of different mechanics they just homogenized dragon lands yeah so Spell, what, Spelljammer what's... has a lot Spelljammer, not sorry, but Spelljammer and Planescape both have weird stuff. Interesting as hell settings, um, unique mechanics, and they're of course not they didn't use it like they didn't utilize any of it in Spelljammer at all. Like right. none of it. And I know they're gonna do the same thing with Planescape. It's just gonna be a generic setting. You're going to get some some lore about the City of Doors, a.k.a. Sigil, uh, a little bit about the Maiden of Pain, and then you're going to have a module. <laughs> and that's yeah. what that book's going to be. And that's not what I think anybody wants. Uh, we no. want actual content. We want actual rules. We want there to be differences. When I pick up this book and I integrate this book into my campaign, there has to be ramifications. And there just are none. So, I... <sighs> No, I'm not done with 5e. I'm going to be running 5e for a long time. I still like the system a lot. There are a lot of flaws, and the flaws are just now more apparent to me than they ever have been before. Mostly because of the OGL, yeah. <laughs> to, be, I, to, to, be, to be fair. And I, I've said it ad nauseum on, on here at this point, but 5e as a system, it's simplistic, but it's a good, solid system. If you just want to be able to pick up a game and run it, 5e is great um, if you're not looking for anything super in-depth. If you really want to get content out of 5e, you need to look at secondary publishers. Um, I, the Jeff Ashworth books, I've talked about them a few times. Those are great. There's a lot of other people who have published content for 5e that are not part of Wizards of the Coast that right. are extremely good. I noticed you had linked the Book of Fiends in our uh, Discord, which everybody should join, by the way. Because mm -hmm. I know we talked about it on a podcast a while back, and just looking through what information I could find on it, I was like, that's a fantastic book. Yeah, it really is. Uh, the, I, the, the problem with a lot of that, and, and something I've realized now more since I've been trying to integrate those other books and other settings, is it's very hard to integrate that stuff into Fae Run. Not 5e. It works perfectly fine with integrating into 5th edition, into your homebrew worlds. But to integrate that into 5th edition is super hard. The Book of Fiends, for example, is a fantastic book. It's full of a ton of fiends and a ton of demons. But a lot of it is like pseudo-Christian demons. Uh, there's the, the Seven Deadly Sins and the, uh, a bunch of demon families for each one. Sure. Which is great. But the concept of sin doesn't really exist in the Fey run. Yeah, that, that's not going to work for yeah. any of the core settings that are out there. But if you're homebrewing stuff, that might be right up your alley. Right. Like the uh, Ouroboros has a very heavy religious theme to it. Mm -hmm. So the Seven Deadly Sins may actually work fiend-wise in, in that setting. Because it's built with it, and it's built for it from the ground up. Yeah, it's funny you'd mentioned that. I was looking through the Pathfinder Bestiary today, and I was actually skimming through demons specifically, and I noticed that they actually have the sins, like you were talking about, with Pathfinder demons. Hmm. And I, I didn't, I was not aware of that, but I saw there was a Wrath demon, and they've taken it's a lot of the demons that you're familiar with, like the Merilith and the. Uh, I'm trying to find the damn page with them. I'm finding devils, but not demons. <laughs> uh, where are you? Yeah, there we go. And like the Glabrazu is a treachery demon. The Vrock is a wrath demon. Uh, the pride demon is Merilith. So it's a lot of the demons that everybody's kind of familiar with in 5e anyway, but they've actually thrown you know different aspects onto them. Yeah. The thing with Pathfinders, I... 
I, I keep looking at it, and I even bought the Humble Bundle and got all that stuff, and I was taking a couple a couple peeks at that. There's a lot of data and stuff that you can just like staple onto your Pathfinder campaign that just then works. Yeah. But there's so much to filter through, I wouldn't even know where to begin half the time. It is a lot. Like, for me, it wasn't that bad because I played 3rd Edition for forever. Um, for somebody who's never really delved into third it's it's a lot it, it yeah. definitely is i was looking today at like you said the, the fiend book and i was trying to find good fiends for my water deep fiendish summer uh campaign that i run every saturday at eight o'clock on twitch grumpy dungeon masters anyways i found that there are like five devils five fiends and that's it there's a spine devil, there's a chain devil, there's a barb devil, there's a bearded devil, and what's the, what's the other one I'm missing? Chain, barb, spine, bearded, bone, yeah. bone devil. And there's the imp, okay? Mm-hmm. And there's a cambion demon, but that's a very particular yeah, demon. Cambion's not even a demon proper, it's actually... Oh, sorry, a- fiend. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. I'm just saying it's it's half you or half mortal, half feed of whatever type. Right. There's a succubus. Uh, there's a pit fiend. There's all the uh, arabashis. But that's literally about it. Like the core demon crew that you have is like levels one through five, and that's it. And then I kind of realized today that most of the monsters that are iconic, really cool monsters are all like CR zero to five. And that's it. Yep. I'm really disappointed by that. I did not realize that or did not see that until earlier today. So I, I hopped over to advanced five E to see what, what fiends they had. So I could steal some content from them. Right. They had nothing, nothing new. They added like cool, like, lore bits to each of the each of the of the fiends like right. oh when you get around here you smell sulfur in the air and a lot of ambience ambience yeah. ambience to set the tone and the mood and their monsters were a little different like their imp can basically go invisible as a bonus action instead of an action right makes it a little bit harder but i already do that anyways who cares i was really disappointed how there's just like no real fiends. And I mean, if you, if you, if you go to D and D beyond, you look just for fiends, you're going to get a bunch, but you can't just like throw all of them at your players. And there's very few variants of really good creatures that you can use a lot. Uh, a lot of them are very particular in how they work. Yeah. Like, um, there's the one that protect that always goes around with hellhounds and protects other animal creatures. Uh, let me get his, uh, let me get the monster up here real quick. Okay. The monster's a, a Maragon. It's a very particular monster. It looks like it has like a little baby face and it's like covered in uh plate mail armor. Right. Or it looks like it's covered in plate mail. It's, it's cool. But at the end of the day, like that you, you can really only like use that one when you're having other monsters or like in a small formation. It's very limited in it's like its usage versus like a bearded devil that you can kind of just throw them out ad nauseum, but they're just hit points on a stick. They don't really do much else. Yeah. Barb yeah. devils are CR five and they're supposed to be like the big bads, but I can throw barb devils at a group of level five guys all day long and they're not going to have any problems fighting them at all. Yeah. It's just, it's one, it, it's, it's, one devil versus, you know, a group. I could put I could put five or six out in the field. It won't matter. Right, because they're very generic. They don't there's nothing interesting about them. It just it it's just sad. I'm just saddened by that. And and the worst part is too is like the barb devil and the bearded devil are very interesting mechanically, but they don't do anything. So one can throw fire, one has a beard that can bite you. Okay. I get. I guess if like you get a bunch of infernal wounds just by random chance, but it's not going to happen because his two hit is so low, and he has to hit you multiple times for it to work. 
And then on top of that, there's just spells for days. You got to spend one night, get a long rest, and then your cleric can come over and heal the heal the infernal wound. Right. You almost have to start medic not metagame, but start homebrewing. No, no, that injury is permanent forever until you know you get it fixed by a cleric in a ritual. And I'm just I'm I'm tired of how easy the monsters are and just how generic they are and just they get thrown away so quickly. Yeah, I've, I've never had a problem with that. Simply because every monster, I won't say every monster, but it's very, very common and my players know it for me to adjust the stats on everything. So if they're yeah, fighting... But I, 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 don't want to take, I don't want to take a bearded devil who's purple and go, this one's blue, and give him 100 more hit points. It's just... No, you don't give him 100 more hit points. That's pointless. You let him cast spells. You know, I, I recall a fight that my players got into several years back, but it was in 5th edition against, and I'm trying to remember the damn name of it, but it was a devil or demon. And in the book, they don't have anything special. They're not anything special. And I gave this son of a bitch the ability to just cast fire spells. And it turned out to be a pretty epic battle. And it was just the players versus that one dude. But when he starts lobbing fireballs and burning hands and everything else, which they normally can't do, that makes the whole scenario different. It makes it a little more creative. If that I actually just... that Go actually ahead. leads to my other problem with 5th fifth, fifth edition that I've been noticing recently is that in order for creatures to become more powerful or in order for cl- player classes to become more powerful, the new archetypes that they've been making for them mm-hmm. just and the new feats that they've been giving them even too, just give players more spells. That seems to be the solution to make things stronger in fifth edition. Just mm-hmm. give them more spells. And personally, I'm not a heavy spellcaster kind of guy. I, I like having spellcasters in my setting. I like that they're there. I like that they're super powerful. But I don't like the fact that everyone can cast spells. Everybody in my current campaign can cast spells except for the barbarian. And he could just go wild magic and start casting spells or pick up a feat and start casting spells. Like, that's the solution to becoming better is just start casting spells for both the players and the monster. That that seems kind of dumb to me. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I, understand, you... I understand that it works. I understand what you said works. That's how you can scale up monsters. But that to me, that's that's putting a Band-Aid over a wound because the problem is the monsters are just not scaled up correctly. Yeah, they don't should... scale. Like, <sighs> if, if you're just pulling what's in the book, I mean, they are what they are. They've never written the 5e book where you... Like, every one of those monster pages should have a little section right off in a corner somewhere, just in a little box that says... Uh, for uh, you know, to make it a CR seven, add this. To make it a CR nine, give it this ability. To make it a CR yeah. eleven, give it. Th- there is no reason that that monster manual shouldn't have that. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'll say that's even that's a failing in general because even Pathfinder doesn't have that. I don't believe Advanced Five E has that. A lot of the big name ones do not have s- scalability, at least not written in. You can obviously do it by your own, you know, means, but I would like to see it in a book. It would be yeah. nice. What's odd is I actually include that in all the modules that I publish because from an adventure league standpoint, it's really helpful to know how I can scale on a counter up or down on the fly. Like mm-hmm. what the author's intent was. And a couple of times it's just like add more add more due regard to this equation. Throw in an imp or two, you know. Give it, give it more hit points in another armor class. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just. I, I, it's disappointing. I, 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 it, yeah, it is. I'm seeing more flaws to 5e the more I talk to a lot of people. It's still a great system. It's still very approachable. But I'm really kind of just, I'm at my wits' end with. And I think I think that's like what I was saying is you need to look if you really want to keep running 5e. If you're going to run the modules as they're written and all, then you're probably stuck yeah. w- with what's there. If you want to build your own stuff, 
and actually start properly, fully homebrewing, even walking away from Forgotten Realms and running other stuff of your own, your own setting, your own world, at that point, you have full control over it. And then you get access to the Book of Fiends and all the other books that are out there that are not written yeah. by Watsi. And you can build something great at that point. Uh, yeah. So r- real quick to interject on everything. So you're talking about all the different lists of demons and devils, and there's like nine of them or some shit like that. So I looked up, uh, I found Wikipedia Devil Dungeons and Dragons. And this is for, I think this is for pretty much every edition, first mm-hmm. onward. And there are 30 different Batazu that are out there. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, like six more non Batazu. Then they have some things called Hellforged Demons. Uh, so there's roughly like 40 different devils, I think, that are not named NPCs. Yeah. But a lot of them you're not going to find 5e stats for unless some other company has put them together or, you know, some fan just did it. Right. What I, what I find really weird is, is, is let's let's take the beholder for example okay Mm -hmm. um so we can focus a little bit a little bit more on um just fiends because i know i know there are a lot of fiends out there and there are a lot of custom fiends out there in fourth edition i remember there being a huge gaggle is is that is that is that the uh proper noun for a group of beholders yes yeah it's a gaggle of beholders or is it an optometrist? I think it's probably optometrist the beholders. I actually, I actually like that better. It's an op- yeah. It's yeah. It's it's an optometry of beholders. <laughs> so, uh, you have you have you have your uh, opt- uh, optometrist of beholders, and in fourth edition there were fire beholders, ice beholders, shadow beholders, light beholders. Uh, along along with the beholder, the beholder zombie, the death tyrant, and the the core ones that are in fifth edition. There were also like a bunch of other kind of weird horror aberration variants of the beholders in fourth edition. Uh, yeah. I can't remember them off the top of my head now, but there were like some that were like blood suckers that instead of having eyes had like little suckers that would stick into you yeah. and kind of cause like the same type of damage. See, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And but so all this stuff was in fourth edition. So why wasn't it in fifth? Why didn't it carry over? I uh, because they are bad at their they they just don't care anymore. Uh, I'm sitting here holding the second ed- edition monster manual, just the basic monster manual, and there's twelve beholders. Right. So, um, so we have beholders, uh, zombie beholders. Let's let's include spectators and gazers. So and death tyrants, eyes of the deep, elder orbs, hive mothers, death tyrants. Are these fourth uh, edition ones you're reading off? Observers, just types of beholders throughout history. Oh, okay. So you just went, yeah. Like I sitting here, I've got beholder, the death kiss, eye of the deep, uh, Galth, spectator, undead beholder, uh, the hive mother, director, examiner, lensman, overseer, and watcher. And that's just in the second edition core monster manual okay so yeah doom sphere elder orb eye of flame eye of frost i use the eye of frost by the way when i wrote dread of the ice devil oh yeah i just i took the eye of frost straight out of fourth edition went okay this is the stats in, in fifth edition and up, updated them like why why not why is that not a thing and why are they not putting out books with this with just all this data and all this information like it's already there you know, like another thing about fourth edition too is like monsters had different types. You had like brutes and soldiers and minions and skirmishers. Yeah, yeah. Like that detailed level of monsters is is totally gone as well, and I can't understand why. But at the same time, it's nice to know, like, okay, this is this is the beholder brute, and this is the skirmishers that are always in its lair. So you put two and two together, and you have a really solid big encounter. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm disappointed that it took all this OGL nonsense for you to finally get kind of to where I've been for a long time on 5e. Because this has been my complaints forever. I mean, I think since we've started doing the podcast, I've been complaining about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you're here now. You made it. <laughs> 
So now, now it's a matter of what to do about it. I'm going to make my own system. Your own system or your own setting? Making Both. your own systems. Okay, well, making your own systems, a lot of work. I've done it well, before, and it's not easy. I mean, now, now that now that 5e is in Creative Commons, there's a lot of like wiggle, way, wiggle room with what you want to use and what you don't want to use. I think a big problem that 5th edition has for me currently right now is if the f- Fey run as a setting is too powerful. And it, it's just dumb. Like, why aren't all the adventurers who have been around for centuries running around and just solving all the world's problems? Why does the world even have problems when, like, why are there people starving in Faerun when clerics and wizards can all just create food all day long? Good berries exist. I think the problem is, is that the spell list is too vast and it can't be, like, discovered you can't really rediscover a major spell that creates food because one already exists and it would change the landscape of the world to be in something that doesn't have that to one that does have that and on top of that i've never really been a fan of the jack vance system i like it it makes a lot of sense the jack vance magic system i've never heard of this so jack vance is, is a fantasy writer okay He's the one that kind of created, I believe, the uh, the magic system that basically oh, okay. you op- it, open a spell book, you read it, and it gets implanted in your brain, and then you pull it out when you want to cast it and use it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, so, I googled it real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. so it's it's basically the idea that we all know from Dungeons and Dragons of right. the mem- of the memorization and preparation of spells. Right. So that's his magic system. I, it's a great magic system. I'm not knocking it. it. It's it's good for what it is. But I would prefer something a little bit more down to earth and gritty. Not something where you can just basically just bust out a book, hold your focus, and expect or whatever bullshit and throw a spell. Yeah. Like, I get that. I think that makes the game way too powerful. I think it, it really... What- that's what 5e is supposed to be. I mean, honestly, yeah. it's, it started going that way at third edition. It's the right. idea that you're you're literally just playing superheroes. Right. But I, I will run something a little bit more gritty, a little something more down to the component level. Like that component pouch exists in 5e. No one ever uses it. No one uses it because they, no added, one uses they it. added the focus in. You don't need it. Right. You don't need it. Third edition like, did not have that focus shit. You, you had to have I like, components. <laughs> I like the idea of the wizard kind of going up and putting on some lipstick and going sup to a tavern owner. And that's how he charms them with a charm spell. So like, I, I kind of like that. I got a couple ideas that I'm working on in the back of my mind on how to handle that. But I'd want to revamp the whole magic system. And I don't think there's a problem with the martial system. And I think a lot of the math that exists for player characters and hit die work in general i think that background math again which is why watsi's claiming that they're not making a new edition because six edition's not changing the math i think the background math of fifth edition works great i just think there's a lot of overlays and things that you can do if you take out the jack fans magic system and plug in your own yeah i mean there there are people that i know who have used a mana system before you know yeah that exists out yeah, there. like there, there's a number of different systems out there. I know if you started googling it, you'd find plenty yeah. of other ways of doing the magic system in there's fifth a, edition D and D. There's an artist I worked with who basically has his DM's Guild products are how to use the Magic the Gathering color system as your spell casting system. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can see that. So there, there's a couple ideas. I have my own uh, that I'm probably going to be working on. And a lot of the martial classes, I think, are fine, but they just need to be kind of, like, tailored down a bit. And I think, and this is kind of pulling this one from third, the idea of going from a base class to uh, an archetype to a prestige class is pretty much tantamount essential to real character growth. Mm-hmm. 
at level three, basically becoming the same thing for the rest of your 17 levels is dull. There needs to be more to it. Yeah, it there does. <laughs> there absolutely does. So uh, I, I have a couple of thoughts and ideas, and I'm going to start putting things together. So I think that's ultimately what, what my decision is, is like, you're, you're going to Pathfinder 2E. I'm going to make my own system of blackjack and hookers. Yeah. Have at it. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, hey, if you get your own system put together, I'll try it out. I love trying it. Oh, you're going to try it out. Uh, I am going to, I am planning on running Pathfinder, although I'm starting the second ed game here shortly. I, I'm supposed to run it this coming weekend. So I still got a lot of work to get done ahead of time. What game what? did you run this weekend? Oh, we were supposed to play Ravenloft, but that got canceled because people had work schedule conflicts and you, you know the normal nonsense that we've been dealing with, which is why I'm moving to doing the second edition game. Um, Ravenloft is now permanently canceled because of player issues. So we're uh, the other DM, Mike, he's planning on running uh, the Dark Souls game and even when I go to Pathfinder, I'm setting it up so I can just run it, whoever's there. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Like, with the second Ed game, it's a dungeon crawl. Whoever shows up, shows up. It does not matter. There's no ongoing proper storyline. It's just basically right. I'm running a one-shot every gaming session. Uh, that's kind of what Dark Souls is going to be as well. And when I move to Pathfinder, I'm thinking of running something uh, Witcher-esque. Yeah, whereas basically you're a part of the players would probably be a part of a guild of monster hunters, and then every game session I can just send out whoever's there. All right, I need you to go track down this thing. I need you to go see what's up in this little town. They've got problems with some monsters, and you know I run a one shot like that. Very yeah. simple. I get to play D and D doing that. <laughs> I don't have to worry about an overarching storyline. I don't have to worry about what players are there and what players aren't. Yeah, I really honestly think that's that's how Adventure League should be set set up as well too. They yeah, should have they should have a bunch of people making a bunch of tier level content, but have this kind of like their own internal Adventures League setting. Like Acquisitions Incorporated is a good example where like it exists, it's in Feyrun, it does things, and you can hire them out to go basically run stuff. You, that should be the group that's always in Adventures League. And if people want to make their own story or play through a book or something like that, then by all means, you know, have yep. fun, feel free. But they really need to focus on really developing one shots for Adventures League instead of one. Adventures League absolutely should be just one shots because yeah. it's it's not always the same players. It's different every week, and you can't have a ongoing continual storyline if you don't have consistent players. It, yeah. it is a bit rough. I mean, there's been a lot of, I had to take five, 10 minutes out at the beginning of everything. They're like, okay, this is what has happened to this group, this table. I always refer to the table as the, the people around it. So this is what happened to the table. <laughs> and you're now trapped in the middle of space. A jellyfish ate you. Good luck. <laughs> Yep. Now, the nice thing about that is you can do that with most systems. Yeah, it's just here, just run something for the weekend. You know, if you have to sit down for three hours or six hours or however long, you can plan that out. Yeah. Well, there's also a lot too to, uh, there's a lot of pat, a lot of support for the Pathfinder Society as well, too, that I've noticed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they're still putting out a lot of content for that. So, oh, yeah. They, yeah. According to Bruce, I think it's every month there's just something new that comes out for it. Yep. Whereas uh, Avengers League fired everybody and then shut down. Yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, speak. Yeah. So, speaking of, I still have a lot of work to get done for the second edition game this weekend. I noticed one thing that second edition does not have. And maybe oh, it's in, that? maybe it's in supplemental books or whatever that I don't own. But within the monster manual, within the DMG, there is no random encounter tables. Really? Yeah, I'm I'm literally having to create it from scratch. Uh, because hmm. random encounters in dungeon crawls, like that's that's a thing, and I'm having to put this thing together. And I I've never had to do that in all of my years of playing. I've never had to put one together. So it's hmm. been kind of interesting. Uh, because in Second edition, they didn't have CR. There was no challenge rating 
as we know it now. Uh, everything was sort of difficulty based by how much experience points it's worth. So, you know, 15, uh, like a 15 experience point creatures, just that's your goblins, that's your kobolds, that's that's the bottom end of things. Uh, 65 is effectively like your CR1 monsters. I think the next one, next tier up is like 145. So it is sort of like CR, but it's just experience instead of actual, yeah, CR 1 8, CR 1 quarter, etc. Yeah. Hmm. But it's been kind of a pain just trying to put this thing together. Uh, Because as I'm going through, I'm having to look at every single monster. What are the experience tables? And some of them have multiple experience tables because there can be there are variations in monsters like a goblin you know the, they might have goblin ranging everywhere from 15 experience up to you know a few hundred experience points hmm. that's interesting yep. yeah i really i really like the idea of goblins always being a threat no matter what level of adventure you kind of go on and i wish there were solutions to that problem other than just add more goblins in you know, like, if you think, like, from a Lord of the Rings standpoint, yeah, the goblins were in mass whenever they showed up. There's always yeah. hundreds of them. And that was, like, their biggest thing. It's like, they were weak, but there were hundreds of them. And they beat you through attrition. You just throw goblins at the problem until the heroes are dead. Yep. But then you look something a little bit, like, different, like Goblin Slayer, where the longer a goblin's been alive, the bigger it gets, the fatter it gets, the stronger it gets, because it's just, it's been living. It just grows exponentially. Right. So a goblin left unchecked becomes like a troll almost. And those are the ones you really got to fear. And especially if one gets smarter as it, as it stays alive, then it starts casting spells and can do tactics with its goblin troops and whatnot. Well, like, there you go. Those things are that's super interesting. There's still only five goblins in, in all of the five E right now, and there's well, like yeah. thirty six in fourth edition. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't even know how many there were in second. It was a ton. Uh, so you've effectively just started your setting for your new <laughs> campaign. Like that's that's does, obviously that doesn't have to be the whole of the campaign, but that's one aspect of it is the fact that goblins, the older they get, the stronger they get. Yeah. You know, so you might have your players end up fighting 50, you know, CR quarter goblins or whatever the hell they are, who are then led by a CR three goblin who is then led by a CR 12 goblin. <laughs> you know, that that CR 12 goblin, he's been around a long time. Yeah. he He's 14, man. Yeah. That's like a thousand and five in human years. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah as goblins life expectancy is like 25 or something. I, I think in goblins say that like their life expectancy is like a week or oh, two. Oh God. I mean, so you like, could, yeah, but you could set those <laughs> numbers as the DM. You can set them however you want in your own world. And I, I think, I think by the end of the first season of goblins, the one he's fighting is like three years old or some shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's like this insane goblin that they're fighting that he's got to like basically trick to kill. And it's like eh, a couple years old, but <laughs> the average lifespan is like a couple weeks. I can yeah. say I, I can say for certainty I don't want to live in that world. No, I don't. Man. We were trying to think of an anime world or anime setting, just an anime that you would actually want to live in. An anime setting that I would want to live in. And I could only I personally could only think of one that would be okay to live in. I mean. I would I would live in the Dragon Ball universe pretty easily. <laughs> That's like I mean, one of the worst. I mean, how how is it one of the worst? They punch and blow up planets. Right, but they did but but Earth, okay, has been blown up like four times. <laughs> and it's always been restored, okay? Mass genocide happens, which sucks, okay? But then they go over to the magical wish dragon and they just reverse it all. So honestly, as just a normal Joe Schmo, okay, cool. Aliens are invading. Huh. Is oh, it look, Tuesday oh, I, already? I, I, I died again. I'm back. I died again. Oh, look, I'm back. All no, right. Sounds, See you next horrible. Tuesday. No, this is a terrible plan. No, you would just become accustomed to it. 
<laughs> oh, is that is that is that a world altering uh, dragon thing monster that's eating people? Cool. Oh, here come those little fly guys with the blonde hair. I'm I'm good. I'll, yeah, I'll nah, just this... go to my summer cabin. Oh, let, know, let, yeah, let me, let me your pop out cabin. my capsule car. Go to your summer camp. You're gonna be dead. You're gonna be dead in like two hours anyway. When one of them punches and the planet explodes, it doesn't matter because they just reverse time. I and know, I know, back. but still, you just keep dying, and then they reverse it. And you die some more, and they reverse. You it. wouldn't know. You just wouldn't know. Uh, I mean, honestly, we might actually live in that world because none of us would know. We wouldn't know, right? Yeah. At least, I, at least they have capsule cars and like universal food and healthcare. Eh, that's, eh, that's a fair point. This is starting right. to sound better all the time, actually. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I do. Do I want to live in freaking uh, uh, New Tokyo from uh, Akira? Uh, no. Akira? Oh, hell god. no! Oh, oh hell god, no. no! Yeah, it's the worst thing. The worst thing ever. Yeah, no. They, like there are very few anime worlds I, that would be okay to live in, and I know there's some that are just you know. There's a lot of anime out there. There are some that are just it's here on Earth. You know, it's nothing weird. That's not what I'm talking about. But for me, it would be uh, my friend Totoro. It's just a very a calm. Totoro? Yeah, my my friend Totoro. It's just a very calm, serene place for the most part. You got spirits, but all the spirits are very friendly. You know, you know, you're just you know, you're just describing actual Japan. Yeah, exactly. You just want to move to Japan. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, okay. I mean, then you you can accomplish that in reality, but, but with spirits. Like actual spirit. I, it all depends on what you believe. I want to ride a cat bus, goddammit. <laughs> I want to ride a cat bus. That's what it is. Uh. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> move, moving on, getting back into gaming topics. Uh, so I've been playing a lot of Frosthaven lately. Okay. And, and I know this is not a role-playing game per se. Frosthaven is a board game for people who are not familiar with it, but it takes a ton of aspects from role-playing games. Uh, so you go on your little adventure, you complete your quest or whatever you have, and then you go back to the town of Frosthaven. When you're in Frosthaven, you can then spend your funds to upgrade the town. You can spend components that you have found and or money to buy slash craft equipment to then help you along the way as you go through this thing. Every time you go to town, you, you know, depending on what you did, depending on how you accomplished the last scenario, you might get sent down another path. You might unlock other side quests. At this point, I think we have four side quests open. And they mm. literally they literally send you like an advent calendar. So when you complete something, you have to peel off number 63 to see what's under it. And 63 is going to have arrows that point in different directions to see uh, if you... You know, if you kill this bad guy at the end of the scenario, you unlock number 64. If you kill this bad guy, you unlock number 13. Stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, and the whole thing is played with a... It's basically a card game, kind of. You move your miniatures around the map, but the cards have different effects. I'm playing something called a Death Walker, which it's effectively like a mage. Uh, Muffin, our buddy Muffin, he's playing a... I don't even know what the character's called, but it's a fucking necromancer. He just summons up a lot of undead and shit. Uh, but the the reason I bring it up specifically is because they announced this week, uh, I think the company's called Cephalofair. They are actually releasing a Gloomhaven tabletop RPG finally. Okay. And I'm I'm on board. Uh, there's very little out other than they're I think they're releasing it in April. They're doing like a Kickstarter or something. Okay. And it looks like it's going from what I can read about it, I just sent you the link in Discord or posted the link in Discord, but it's going to run kind of like the role playing game. You're getting all the lore, all the classes, you get to build your characters and everything. It is a tabletop role playing game, but rather than using dice, you will actually use a card system for doing things. Okay. That sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you it's can been join a while. The play test. Uh, I'm I'm not worried about the play test. I'm just I'm gonna see when it comes out if I've got the funds whatsoever. I'm definitely hopping in the uh, Kickstarter. 
because I've I've been enjoying it. It's a completely unique setting. All the races are different. All the classes are different. It's not just I'm a fighter. No, you actually get to do stuff. I'm a fighter. I pick up swords and I stab people in the in the face. Yep. I mean, I'm sure they'll have something like that too. But there's a lot of other ones. Very cool. Yeah. So people keep an eye out for it. Uh, April of this year is what it looks like. We're in 2023, right? Yeah. No, so, it's 2024. Shit. We missed it. It was last year. Oh, shit. Why are you bringing up topics that are a year old then? I don't I, I don't know. It's all I got, man. We're not <laughs> we're not talking about the OGL anymore. We're out of we're out of news. <laughs> yeah, the news is that it was, they're deadly silent right now and they're just praying everyone go see go see the D and D movie. You gotta go news. see it. Yeah, I'll go see it. I'm not going to bring a ton of people to go watch it, though. I'm not going to make a big deal about it like I was planning to, but I'm going to go see it. Yeah. Uh, I'll I don't, enjoy it. I don't normally go see movies with friends, but this one, if everybody wants to go, we'll go. Yeah. Because it's the D&D movie. The, the second theatrical D&D movie. <laughs> Third. Uh, I think there are only two theatrical ones. Like oh, two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah there was. Uh, there have been more than two D and D movies. There are a few. <laughs> they did three back in the '90s, early slash early 2000s. There was a theatrical one. They did two after that. There were follow ups to it, and then there's been cart. There was a cartoon movie of the uh, Dragon Lance stuff, at least a little bit of it, that wasn't particularly good animation. Now we get a new one. Sorry. Yep. So what what are your plans then? Uh post post playing second edition, post playing Pathfinder. Uh are your plans for Pathfinder gonna be their adventures or are you gonna be running your own content out of that? Yeah, like the adventures, I, I don't care about. I have no use for those. Um like I, I, you know me, I, I homebrew every damn thing. I always have, always will. I'm, I'm old like that. Why don't you try one of the adventures? Why would I? Just as a, as a starter thing, just to see if, if their adventures are better than what five E slash three E adventures were. I mean, I own second adventure, uh, second edition ones. I own first edition ones. I don't, I don't yeah. even use them. I, I'll dig through them for content. Uh, but I actually running them, it's not going to happen. Why would I use other people's stuff when I can create my own? I mean, some of it's award winning stuff. I, I, that means nothing to me. I, I award winning. I don't watch the Grammys and then go listen to the musicians that won. Why not? That's and the, the whole va- point the of vast, them winning. The vast majority of movies that win Oscars are not good movies. Yeah, but this is a different world. Yeah, now I'm not saying that whatever content these people write and put out isn't fantastic, but I just create my own stuff. I've always done that. It's more entertaining to me. I mean, here I was just telling you, I'm play kind of what my plans are. As for, uh, yeah, like I'm going to be running sort of the one shots until if we can ever get all of our play group back together. I would love to finish my campaign, which is only halfway through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I would convert it probably to Pathfinder if I did that, just because I'm I don't want to play any more Five E. I'd rather use a different system. Because one thing I did I did find interesting about the Pathfinder is they have those adventure paths of theirs, mm-hmm. where there's like eleven different adventure paths. One of them's Kingmaker, you know, the yep. game you played and raved about. Yep. Like I'm surprised you're not grabbing one of the King like the Kingmaker story and playing through it and just seeing how that works see if it's any different than a book adventure from 5e i mean i already, you, I already ran kingmaker <laughs> no, you played kingmaker no no i played the video game and then i ran my own homebrew campaign where my characters all became barons of some lands and had to deal with that shit mm. like i've already done that i don't need to go through the campaign the the ongoing campaign that i have is a continuation of that campaign. Unfortunately, I, I, I can't. Huh? 
I'd play Abomination Vaults. Yeah. For you, it might be fantastic. Uh, I know you do enjoy running other people's, you know, writings and campaigns and stuff. So grab them, read through them. You might find some stuff you like. You might decide that you want to play a Pathfinder game or run a Pathfinder yeah. game. I don't know. I just, I just, I just feel like you should give them a shot. I don't have a problem with them. I just don't. I don't care to run other people's stuff. You know, I just don't. I never have. It's never been something I was interested in. Uh, I learned very, very early in my DMing career, I'm way better when I make my own shit. So I picked up a long time ago a couple of Dragonlance modules, and I tried to run them, and none of it worked. And I realized none of it worked because I have to read through all of this ahead of time. I have to know every step along the way ahead of time. And I have to know, you know, and then when the players go off book, and mind you, this is when I'm like, you know, 16 or 17, and players going off book when you're new to DMing is hard as hell. But if they go off book, if they go off script, if they ignore what's in front of them, well, shit, now I'm really having to make stuff up. And here's hoping that I can manage to get them back on track. Now, where I'm at now in my DMing career, I can absolutely do that. But younger me, not so much. Ooh, it looks like there's going to be a 5th edition, uh, special edition of Abomination Vaults. Cool. Now, all that being said, I am still expecting the uh, Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman uh, 5e game to be coming out sometime this year. And I, yeah, what's I will, it called? I, I forgot. Like I uh, keep forgetting the name of it. Is it Sky Raiders? Skylancer? I, Sky Raiders of Abraxas. Thank you. Sky Raiders of, of Abraxas. Abra- yeah, that's Lances. it. Dragon Raiders of Sky Skylances. Yeah, that's that's not it at all. No. It's Sky Raiders of Abraxas. Oh, okay. uh, oh wait, no. Sky Raiders of Abarax. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, that's it. A-B-A-R-A-X. Jeez. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out. Sometime this year, hopefully. Uh, I, I still don't think I'm going to run it because it's 5e, but I might. I may just convert it to something else and run the setting. Yeah. I actually want to see the books and read through them before I make any sort of decision like that. I, I kind of wonder with all the, this old DL stuff, if this the, the everyone publishing stuff for 5e is going to kick back up again, or if people are going to be so soured that you're just going to be like, you know what? How about nah? And 5e, just... 5e's only got like a one year life expectancy at this point. So no, I think it's done. I think it's just mm-hmm. over. No, you're not going to get many people publishing for quote unquote fifth anymore. Uh, we'll see when sixth comes out if people want to go back to that. Uh, like there's whatever's already been made will almost certainly come out. Like you know, Jeff Ashworth might have another book coming out that's already done and ready to go, and people that already have things coming out like Sky Raiders or Aberex. Uh, but as far as creating new stuff. Probably not. Hmm. That that's a shame. I really do like all the the the, the bloat of content for fifth edition. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a bloat of it. Bloat uh, in a good sense. Yeah, no, not I like a bloated that's... body floating down the river, <laughs> but kind of like you. I want to eat this chicken, and it's just like this big fat chicken. You're like, yeah, that's a bloat. That's a bloated chicken. That's gonna be good. No, I, I understand. I guess there is. Yeah, a lot of it's online. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, f- I find a lot of it at, like, what I look for, I look for at bookstores. I don't look online. I'm, I'm kind of old-fashioned that way, so I don't see a ton of it. Uh, this is the reason the Jeff Ashworth stuff really stuck out to me was simply the fact, oh, I'm at my local book-slash-gaming store, and here's a new D&D 5th edition book. That's not <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. I've seen one of these ever. <laughs> yeah. So. So I uh, I did. I only I only got to play my Saturday Gant game, and uh, I uh, every every time I post about my game, I usually label it, 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 it a reoccurring theme of 
like session eight, the I can't remember what it was, but the session nine was this weekend. I said session nine, the windmill, because okay. that was going to be the main focus of the like it was it was a big story beat that had to happen. Yeah. So I called the one the windmill, and we ran the session. And they finished the sewer level part that they were in. They killed a bunch of trolls. We had a poll running whether or not who to see who was going to die to the trolls because there was two trolls that they were fighting and they were what, pretty much tapped. What level are your characters? Four. Okay, yeah. yeah now if they're tapped and a couple of trolls, that's that's a good fight. Yeah, it's a good fight. Yeah. So we we started a Twitter poll and everyone was voting against like all the players. But the players didn't get knocked down at all. They just killed the two trolls for some reason. And I don't know why, but for me, whenever I have trolls, they either TPK the party or they just die like chumps. Or get steamrolled. <laughs> there's no in between. There was one time I was playing 4th edition where there's these two really cool trolls. They're brothers. And there are hyper level, high CR level trolls. And they're basically just kicking the shit out of each other. Okay. And they start to fight bloodied. Okay. Yep. But still, it's like they have double the hit points of a normal troll. And they heal like twice as much as well. Mm -hmm. So when the fight started, they weren't supposed to fight these guys. They're supposed to die to them if they did fight them. Uh, You're supposed to just like talk to them and then they were going to tell you how to get to the troll king. So you're just supposed to have a social encounter with them. But yeah. these players decided to fight them. So they fought them and just absolutely just stomped the shit out of one in like two rounds. And the other one goes into his blood rage when that happens. And he's supposed to basically just murder people in one shot. Like he does like a, it was something like a, it was four E sets. So he's like doing like a hundred, 150 damage a hit. Damn. And that's a lot for their high level. It should have one shot them. Didn't kill anybody. No one got hurt. <laughs> And then here I am with this game, a bunch of level fours, two trolls. One of them's like half a troll. So it's like a troll and a half, really. Okay. A couple of hits happen. Okay. But no one even gets knocked down. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. So we go through the, the sewer level. They go and they talk for a little bit. There was a random encounter that I had planned for them that I just randomly rolled for. And it was basically a bunch of occult, uh, acolytes stealing a monster from the House of Wonders in Waterdeep. Okay. And the players were supposed to stop them. And they went, nah, dude, fuck that. And they left. So they get there and they're telling the NPC everything that happened, everything that they found, and what the plans are, where they're going to go, what they're going to do. And then someone drops that, oh, yeah, we saw a bunch of people loading a a monster from the house of wonders. And the guy's like, Oh shit, that's going to be a big deal. You should go stop them and see if you can. And the players go, all right, since you asked nicely, we'll, we'll go stop them. And so at this point in time, they've been going all day. All right. They've only had short rest. They haven't had a long rest. The wizard said he was tapped. He had like two spells left. Um, the, the fighter slash caster, that he's playing had like a spell or two left. My wife was the only character that came back with like full, but they were all like pretty well hurt. And one of them was exhausted for the rest of the day. Ooh. So they get to where these acolytes are and they just, just raffle stomp the, the acolytes. Cause they're like nine hit points. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, nothing, nothing to big there, but the crate falls out of the cart and smashes open, revealing a Gorgon. Oh shit. Right. So here's this giant metal ox that breathes petrification gas. Although petrification in 5e is trash. Yeah, it is. So my wife gets pseudo gets the first level of petrification. She saves out of it the following round. Uh, I get a good charge on the wizard because he's the first person to hit it. So he was the focus of the, of the, the Gorgon's rage. He doesn't die in one hit. I did like 37 damage to him, but he somehow saves the strength save and doesn't fall down and get trampled by the Gorgon. He he survives like eight hit points and he runs away. And the other guys just proceed to beat the shit out of this Gorgon. And the Gorgon is doing everything he needs to do. You know, I'm playing him appropriately. 
one player does get petrified, but chat does save him. But that's, you know, part of the stream. That's, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to have audience, you know, interaction. Uh, so one person would have got petrified out of the fight. But again, they're in the middle of water deep. So it's not like the the wizard NPC that they're using can't just like, oh, let's go bring him to the, you know, healing hut. Yeah. And I'll, yeah, not, I'll pay. Not to, not to, to mention, get where's all the guards and wizards and everything else that lives in the city? Like yeah. there's no, there's no chance of the players really dying fighting a gorgon in the middle of Waterdeep. Well, I mean, that's that's the hard part about the combat. This was in the middle of the night, so there are few people and few guards. And the guards do show up. There was a fight we had a while ago where there was a parade going on, and they were in a lull section of the parade and they get attacked by assassins. Uh but the assassins attack every single parade float, and there's like 12 parade floats. So the guards are like helping everybody out. But by the time three rounds have gone by, they're pretty much done with a fight. Okay. That's only 18 seconds. Yep. So it, that fight gone. The guards aren't going to come help. They, you don't have an 18 second reaction time. I couldn't run a block in 18 seconds. Maybe a guard could. But it's it's not like the guards can just show up out of the ether and like save everybody. Yeah, I mean they could probably save them once the Gorgons finishes rampage, but you have to hope that you pass your pass your death saves. But it was it was funny though. I threw out this Gorgon. Everyone's like, "Oh shit, we're gonna die!" And my wife said it was the hardest fight she's she's been in in a while. And I'm sitting here like, it's "Like you guys just beat the shit out of it." it, it it could have had a pacifier in its mouth, and it could have been a baby for all you guys know. And you guys just raffle stomped it. I don't know. That's yeah. I don't even want to say that's five e. That honestly, it's just table topping. Um, yeah, I guess. Like sometimes it it just goes that way, like it or not. So I, I, all in all, they never got to the windmill. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I think That's it's like, table topping. Yeah, I think it's like when you we do the uh, streams every Monday, Tuesday. We're playing video games for like we've been doing Grounded, and you'll title it like Ant Genocide or something like that, and then we don't kill a single ant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're like, oh, we're just gonna go kill bees and then fight some spiders and everything else. Well, tomorrow it's called the termites. Yeah, tomorrow tomorrow it will be termites. Uh, that's happening on well monday will be termites you're listening to this on tuesday so well yeah yesterday's stream tonight's yep. stream is going to be more tier three gear i guess that's what i'll call it more tier three gear yeah yeah and who knows we might do it on thursday we'll see uh so i got one other thing i want to chat about before we wrap this up okay and it's a uh it's a post i found on Dungeon Master resources, and a lot of times those are just. <laughs> but th this one's actually kind of a good one because there's no proper rule for it in 5e. Uh, so I'll just read it verbatim. Uh, so, well, it happened again, and it led to the same old tired conversation with players. They were exploring inside a bad guy's lair and quickly found the dungeon where there was prisoner, a prisoner shackled and chained to the wall. The prisoner was in poor health due to ill treatment and probably torture. The PC's first thought was to pick locks and free the prisoner. And the pre-written module provided the info, uh, which was a DC-20, with lockpicking tools. But of course, the players rolled crappy and could not pick the locks. They, even, uh, they, they had even taken the precautions of somebody taking the help action to get advantage, and the bard provided inspiration. However, the dice were against them. And, of course, the players wanted to just try again. You know, like, we're not an initiative. We should have time to try as many times as necessary. Well, the DM, if I just let you try over and over, then there was no way to fail, so why would I have you roll to try? Unless the DC was host, so high, you could not succeed, in which case, again, it would be pointless to roll. My players have gone out of their way to make sure their characters have multiple ways to modify each other's die rolls, inspiration, flash of genius, bless, guidance, etc. So they are not accustomed to failing a spell save in combat or an insight check to tell when an NPC is lying, let alone failing to pick a simple non-magical lock. 
How do other DMs handle this? And there are no rules in 5th edition for that. It, the, the DM is not wrong. If he just allows you to try over and over and over again, then there's no point of ever having you make that roll to pick the lock. Uh, I'm a fan of the 3rd edition one where they had take 20. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's effectively, you can just, if you are not in combat, if you have no th- active threats, if there's no fear of you getting into anything, you can just take, I, I think it's 10 minutes of your time and automatically succeed in something that shouldn't be that hard. Uh, how would you handle this? I thought that there was something in uh, the DMG concerning saving throw. There may be. Uh, I am not familiar with it. They had never seen it. I didn't see anything in the uh, responses, although there were like 250 responses, so it's not like I'm scrolling through all of them. I can't remember, but I could have sworn that's like you can make an attempt on a th- something. This is off the top of my head. This could totally be wrong, but it's something like you can attempt to do something, and then if you fail, you can attempt to do it again an hour, an hour later. Yeah. But the difficulty goes up by two. I, I That's not unreasonable, but why an hour? <laughs> yeah. I. It w- so, like, it doesn't make sense when it comes to, like, you know, picking the guy out of a lock, but it's assumed that you tried and tried and tried and you failed. So you have to come back and reapproach it. You have to study it, look it over. So they just threw out an hour, a short rest. Yeah. Before you can try it again. So in the case of, like, you know, the, the how, how you describe the role with the, the locks and, you know, failing to mess it up, maybe you got a piece of, like, your lock picking kit stuck in there and it takes you an hour to to unpick it sure yeah now, i've seen a lot of lock picking lawyer on youtube and there are some times where he spends quite a lot of time working on something for the first time but those are like super complicated high level things yeah so he spends 15 20 30 minutes trying to pick a lock and but eventually he, he is successful so also from that regard as well too if these are high security chains, okay, so they have a high DC, like a 20 or a 25, and the person fails, it's not like you try for six seconds and you failed and you're done. You probably tried for 10, 15 minutes and still couldn't get that successful. Mm-hmm. So something happened, you had to come back and reset. So I think that's why they came up with an hour because they wanted a universal time frame for everything. Yeah. And then, well, I mean, then there's also the issue of you can't just break the chains. You know, well, everything has a hardness level like it just does. Um, that is one thing they do in Pathfinder. They have like everything has hardness levels. Shields do armor does chains would. So you y'all, like there should be a method of just breaking the chains if you can't pick the lock. Right. I mean, but that's up for the players to kind of like convince the DM of. Yeah, I, I believe I'm there... with you. Like, I agree. I think you can go outside the bounds of the rules. You're the DM. Um, right, but it, within so the chain, rules, there's chain nothing. does have does have stats. It has ten hit points okay. and can be broken with a DC twenty strength check. We'll see. There you go. That's that was something else they could have tried then. So yeah, I mean, pull a pull a thing from the wall. You know? Yep. I mean, yeah. we we go back to like you can break you can solve a lot of problems with just raw strength. Yeah. Conan yeah. killed an elder god with just strength alone. You know, so it's possible. He yep. broke a magic item with his fists. Pretty impressive. You know, right. wizards, wizards they can break magic items with just their bare hands all the time. No, with a the spell, they can. No, no, with their bare hands. If it is actual a, bare hands? Yeah, just bare hands. If it's a staff of the magi, yep. You can just break that item at any point, and it explodes. Well, that's if you fail the, the, the re-roll on it. I'm just saying, uh, but it all it takes is two bare hands from well, a wi- from, a, from a wizard with level six or with six points of strength. I want to see him just take it and hold it and just snap it and snap it in place without using it. I mean, via the rules, that's all they need. 
sometimes the rules don't make sense. When they don't make sense, go outside the rules to make them make sense. That's that's what you should be doing as a DM. <laughs> a- AKA, let them break the chains. Let them pick the lock. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So to kind of kind of answer your question, what I usually let them do is I let them try and then fail. And then someone's like, well, can I help them? And then I'll let them roll at an advantage. And uh, yeah, well, they had already if, rolled it at advantage. Right. Well, I don't like to do that ahead of time, because if you if you if you pump it all up ahead of time and you fail, well, you're screwed. You know, yep. it's not going to happen. Uh, good luck. He's stuck there forever. Find another solution. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's just gonna be keep hanging there forever. Just cut off his hands, stick his hand back on, and then cast a cure spell. I mean, hey, it sounds like another way to do it. Because you're not restoring a limb, you're just healing the cut when they just happen to cut straight through the limb. Yep. Right. And, and he'll, yeah, and he will maybe survive it. Uh, make sure when you cut off the hand that you don't double his current hit points or whatever the hell it is for massive damage. <laughs> Roll on the shock table. Yep. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. You got anything else? Roll on the shock table. Roll on the shock table. I think that's one of my title this episode. <laughs> Sounds good. Goodbye, everybody. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye, Craig. <laughs>